scary to hear that door lock. <laughs> so you're getting a sermon whether you like it or not. That's right. Well, good morning. It's good to see each of you on this below freezing day. And uh, I know it's cold when I have to wear a coat. It's cold. Uh, but it's, we are thankful for another day we have. Uh, I want to lift up our announcements this morning. See, we got, we got. Uh, let me see. Birthdays coming up this next week. Miss Alice has got a birthday. Do you have a birthday coming up? Me. Oh, Alice. Alice. Alice back there. You pointed. You pointed dot, but it was Alice's. Uh, Dylan has a birthday. And let me see, we'll, be, we'll get Caroline the next week. And uh, there's Tammy and Clifton, so we'll get those next week. And anniversary, that'll be next Sunday, is that right? Oh, it's wrong. Oh, it's wrong? It's 12-25. Okay, we'll get you on Christmas then. Y'all got married on Christmas? Wow. Did you have that white beard when you had? Oh. Thought maybe he was working another job, and she said, "Hey, that's a Santa Claus right there." Yeah. Did you say this is your 50th anniversary? Wow. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, we saw. We certainly want to remember that and make sure you don't forget, uh, Coach. Make sure you don't forget, okay? Uh, any, any other announcements? Uh, they're in the front. Christmas can talk at the night. Yes. And we, oh, in the front there. Okay, I'm sorry. You got this stuff. It's got this worked out. I just got to look at it. Um, yeah, and we got, um, of course, it's at Brown's, but we got some folks here from the church at Mount Carmel singing. And uh, I think it's going to be a good time. I hope you'll come be part of that. Uh, and they're going to have a meal afterwards, so stay and enjoy fellowship with that. They, they, they are like a lot of churches. They can't eat. They can't meet and eat, not unless they eat. So we got to eat. Do we bring anything? If you want to bring a dish, you can, yeah. Uh, finger food, like chicken, stuff like that. Be good. <laughs> they're, providing, they're providing the meat, and I think everybody else is just bringing them. Yeah, I always say finger food is chicken, like chicken legs, stuff like that. Uh, then on the 14th, there's some unknown groups going to be here the same, and uh, we look forward to hearing them. Uh, and then our hourly prayer continues on the 21st, uh, and then Come and Go Communion will be at Brown's. Uh, I do that from 6 to 7. If you and your family wants to come and just come in and have communion and leave, you can do that. Uh, that's just my gift back to the church to be there on Christmas Eve to make sure anybody wants to come in and be with their family. Any other announcements? That's wonderful. Okay. And you might want to let them know that the is going to start at five. Yes. So if you're singing, you need to be there at four. Okay. Be there at four if you're singing, and if you pretend to sing, you still need to be there at four. And some of them's been sick. We've had to just move our mouse, but and then uh, five o'clock's the beginning. Yeah, I had down 9.30 for the practice, and it was 9, so I almost missed practice. Anyone else? At the Rose Garden, did you say that? 
No, I didn't. I did not say that. Did I not? Oh, okay. December 12th. I, jumped, I don't know how I jumped over that. Meet at the church, and that's a wonderful time. We enjoyed it last year, be with the residents. Gifts are all wrapped, ready to go. All right. Now we're going to leave here at the church at 1 o'clock. Okay. Anything else? The bulletins look nice this morning. Tell whoever did those, they did a wonderful job. And they still have a job next week, so we appreciate it. Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought last week y'all were talking about maybe getting together and doing the songs, and so I didn't call you. I apologize. Yeah, the songs, I just don't have your sermon time. Oh, that's probably important. Okay. I get I just thought you'd be aggravating. I didn't know. We'll get that to you, though. Anybody else? The church looks beautiful. They were direct, uh, decorated. Did a wonderful job. And it looks beautiful. Anyone else? Let's uh, begin our, our service today as we prepare our hearts for worship. Uh, song of Praise, uh, number 220. I invite you to stand. Those are able. <laughs> of faith, our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Now a light of our second candle. <coughs> Shall be made straight and the rough places plain. 
And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The voice said, Cry, and he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the godliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it, surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arms, and carry them unto his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with the young. It is a blessing to receive comfort during times of trouble. An encouraging word, a hug from a friend, a shared meal, each of these actions can sustain us during difficult times. Isaiah reminds us that the source of our peace and comfort is God's love and care for us. Even in times of hardship, God holds us close. Speak to us again your comforting words, O God, that we may know once more your deep peace. Use us as instruments of your peace, so that we may comfort others in the name of your Son, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Now I invite our ushers to come to see our, well, first we've got a hymn here, okay. Our next hymn is number 229. I invite you to stand, those are able. seated. We invite now ushers to come to receive our morning offering. Appreciate Miss Mickey's going to have a special for us today too. Let's pray. Dear God, we do thank you for another day. We thank you for the many gifts of life. Lord, this time of service, we pause just for a moment to remind us to give back a portion that is needed to do thy work, to build thy kingdom, and do, Lord, the things that we need to do we might lift up your name. Now we thank you for the gift and the giver in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>
Miss Mickey for that beautiful song. Thank you, Miss Nancy, for playing. You know what a blessing it is when you have a church that doesn't have singers or musicians. I've been in services where we didn't have them, and uh, we did the best we could, but uh, it's so much a blessing to have musicians and those that can sing. Uh, this morning, I'd like you to look with me, if you would, to Mark chapter 1. <clears throat> I'll be reading the first four eight verses there, and uh, let us hear God's word. To begin the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thee, for your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And John came in the wilderness and preaching the baptism and repentance for remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and with a leather belt around the waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. When you ask the question today as we prepare a way, we first have to ask, where is God in our lives? Where is the Lord in our lives? Where, where is the, the position of God? In our, is, is God distant from us or is God close to us? Is God somewhere in between? And, and we begin to examine that question. We say that, that really determines how we prepare. How we prepare for the coming of the Lord. John was very adamant about saying, he said, I'm, I'm doing th something God has called me to do. I'm come to baptize with water. But there's one who will come and baptize you with, with fire and the Holy Spirit. And, and whose shoes I'm not even worthy to unloose. But said, you need to get ready because he's coming. And in the minds of those standing there, because I can't read their minds, but I, I think if they're probably much like us, they were saying, well, I wonder how far away he is. I wonder when he really is coming. Because I, do I have enough time to get ready? Do I have enough time to prepare? Uh, is he coming tonight? Is he coming in a few weeks? Is it years from now? Uh, what, what is my time span I have to get ready for this coming of the Lord? It's the same way we have visitors at our house uh, you know, if we say, well, we've got somebody coming over for dinner tonight, we, we get in a rush and we try to arrange everything and get everything ready and, and, uh, and we try to get prepared. Uh, but if it says, now they're going to be coming in two weeks, what do we do? We wait and we procrastinate and we, we wait around and, and then we end up doing just like we did if they were coming that night because at the last minute we said, we forgot we've got to get together and get this done. I was talking, we did a uh, progressive meal last night with the kids. If you want to gain 15 pounds in one night, I can show you how to do it. Uh, first of all, we started off at a house and we went to the wrong place. Now you could have seen that woman's face. Uh, I was the last one off the bus, I was driving the bus, but uh, Taylor Graves, uh, was first, Taylor Alfred was the first one to get on there. And, and, of course, he, he walks up and he's ringing a bell like ten times because he thought it was somebody we knew. And the lady come to the door, shocked, you know, to see this young man standing there and, and all these kids behind him. There was like 15 of us there. And they're all just standing there looking at her. And, and she said, and she held the door and the dog and she said, can I help you? And he said, we must be at the wrong place. We come to eat dinner. And she's just like, <laughs> you know, um, not expecting a visitor, and that's the way that lady was last night, and that's the way we are if we don't, uh, if we're not ready for the visitor to come. And really, Jesus shouldn't be a visitor; he should be somebody who we expect as a guest to come soon in our lives. 
And not only that he comes, Luke, but we have that connection with him, know that he is really so close that we need to be prepared. Now, I was starting to finish what I started to say about the, last night. They, uh, in one of our houses, we stopped. And one of the uh, parishioners said that they had invited the kids one time and had forgotten about it. And they were supposed to provide a ham that night. And so they forgot about it. And about uh, a couple of hours before the time the kids were supposed to arrive, uh, their alarm or something went on their phone or something that said, hey, we've got a meeting tonight, the kids are coming. And, and he goes, oh, no, we're supposed to bring a ham. And, uh, and so he said they went by honey ham or somewhere and grabbed one as quick as they could and got it set up. And nobody ever knew the difference. But he said it was just so chaotic, so scary. He said, I thought we, we almost missed it. We almost missed what we're supposed to. And what if those kids had showed up and no ham? There's nothing there for them to eat. And I, I think sometimes we get that way. We get so busy in our lives daily that we forget the Lord is coming. He's coming, and it could be any time, any hour, any place, any time. And last week, last, last, last week I told you, it says, No, not the angels, no, the hour, no, the time. Uh, not even the angels in heaven, but only the Heavenly Father. And so it's important for us to be ready. So where is God? Where is God in our life? You begin to la examine your spiritual life. Um, are you like the ones that have your lamps trimmed and burning? Or you believe He's coming tonight? And so you're in earnest about that, and every day you live, you live it as if the Lord is coming tonight. That'd be a wonderful thing if we all could get to that place, wouldn't it? That we live every day as if the Lord comes today. I want to be ready. I want to be uh, knowing that if the Lord comes, I won't be surprised. I was expecting you. I'm so glad that you're here. And Lord, I'm ready. My heart is ready. My life is where it should be. My, my lamps are trimmed and burning. My, my heart is cleansed. I have been baptized. I've been covered by your blood. Uh, I'm, I'm being sanctified. I, I'm ready for Lord you to come. What an awesome thing that would be for each and every one of us to be that way. But it seems that life itself keeps us from being prepared. Uh, we get so busy. We get so overturned by the events of the day. Uh, you know, there's something every day happening that says, oh no, we, we, we ain't got time for that. We ain't got time for this. A lady the other day who found out that uh, she was sick uh, said to her family, she says, I don't have time for this. I don't have time to be sick. And you probably said that before too when you're sick. I don't have time for this. But in God's plan, God is saying to us to be ready. And John is just screaming. I can just see John in his, in his, uh, his uh, camel hair and he's been eating wild locusts and everything. He's probably got a dip running down his face, you know, from eating those locusts. It's just really gross looking. I mean, honestly, he wasn't the prettiest thing in the world. And some of the pictures are portrayed of him. He had a had camel hair and a leather belt around his waist, probably made for some animal. He ate locusts and had wild hunt, you know, wild honey. All these things was going on. He was living, you know, from day to day. And, and his whole desire was is to preach and to tell people about Jesus. He was being prepared. He was getting ready. And these people he was speaking to were going, who is this guy who stands up here, comes out of the wilderness, and starts speaking to us about this Lord who's coming? And he says, and he, even at one point he really gets on to him, calls them vipers and different things. He scolds them, says, Why, who told you all to be here? You know, uh, that's later on in the passage. But he says, there's one who's coming who's, I'm not even worthy to touch his shoes. Now that, that has a lot of meaning to it. I mean, you, you're so low that you can't even, you're not even allowed to touch his shoes. You're not even reached down to unlatch his, his uh, sandals um, compared to who this person is. And John was held up with high esteem with those that were listening to him because he was preaching a new thing. He was saying, Jesus is coming. The Lord and Savior is coming. The opportunity for you to change your life is here. And you need to be listening to what I say. Bless you. And... What are we listening to today? Are we listening to people like John who's saying, get ready? Are we saying, you old foolish man and woman, why do you keep telling us to get ready? It's been 2,000 years and he hasn't come back yet. Why do you keep pressing this? It's because it's an urgent thing for us to know. The Bible says to us and the scripture says, prepare the way. Prepare the way. The Lord is coming. The time is at hand. I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate, but in my lifetime, my short lifetime, I've seen a lot of things that my parents didn't see or my grandparents didn't see. The move of the uh, technology world has changed just in my lifetime. I remember when I was in college, 
the first computer we had was uh, Carl the Robot. I don't know if you've ever heard of that before, but it was our class in college, and we thought we were so advanced. I mean, we basically had to tell it to go left, go right, go forward, go left, go right. It basically, you know, it was uh, kind of the early basic programming. Now you just think it, and it does it. You just take a finger and punch it, and it does what you want it to do. We've seen technology change so much. And even in this last week, you know, even though whether you agree or disagree with what the president did about Jerusalem being called the capital and moving the embassy over there, that's biblical. I mean, it's, uh, it, it, these things will come about in my lifetime. You know, I thought that was something that was going to happen way after I'm gone. You know, the Lord will come way after I'm gone. I'll already be in heaven with God, and I'll, I don't have to worry about all this stuff. But it seems that these events and these things are beginning to happen right before our eyes. The Lord's coming very soon. And we need to be ready. We need to prepare our hearts and minds and our lives and, and make sure we tell our children about it and, and be good instructors to others that Jesus is coming. Just like John did back many years ago when he came out of the wilderness, he began to tell them he was not the, the most respected looking person, but he came out with a message that was very respected. And he said, Jesus is coming. You know, I baptize you with water, but he is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And your lives are going to be changed and you're going to be uprooted from your daily activities because he's going to give you a new vision, a new opportunity, a new direction. And today in society, we resist that message so many times in the world. I've seen a, I've seen a billboard that was being advertised on TV about, I don't know exactly where it's at, but it was an atheist billboard. And it says, don't waste your time going to church. It's all fake news. And I want to change that a little bit and say, go to church because you need to hear the good news. Amen. We need to hear the good news and, and to imagine that society's got to the point that we're so brazen that we say to the world, I don't believe in God and I'm going to put it out for everybody to see. You know, I think that's kind of, we try to explain blasphemy. I think that's, we're getting right there. When you deny the existence of God and you uh, deny his deity and you deny the message that he sends to you, you have, have turned off your heart to God. It's a, it's a very scary thing. Society says, I'll do whatever I want to do, when I do, and what I do, and it's nobody else's business, and I'm going to be who I want to be, and I can I do this, and as long as it uh, is okay with me, that's all it should be. God said it's not about us. It's about God. He created us from the dust of the earth, not that he would serve us, but that we'd serve him. Jesus came down in the form of a servant to remind us what a servant should look like. He humbled himself and he gave his life on the cross for us that we might understand what John was saying. We need to get ready. Years ago when we were young kids and our mom and dad would set us in front of the old black and white TV that we had. Had three channels on it and one of us three boys had to be the antenna turners. Remember those? I was from the Turner family back then. I was stronger than the other two, so I could turn the antenna until one of them was a holler. He would holler out the window, right there, no back. And we'd watch our TV and we'd come in and sit down and, and we'd, mom would get us all ready. We'd have our little, uh, uh, you know, our little uh, husky pants on and white and black from Sears and Roebuck or whatever they were back then, our little belts. I've seen pictures of us. I mean, we looked like a, a Elton John in a lot of our pictures back then, but, but we had uh, was dressed up and was getting ready for church. And Mom would always clean us up, make sure we had the best we had on. It wasn't a lot, but what we had was the best. Had a little short tie. I hate those little short ties we had to wear. We wear those little short ties, and we'd have our hair all combed back like it should be, and we'd be at church. But we'd sit in front of the the Three Stooges and watch the Three Stooges when they was on. You know, black and white Three Stooges. That was a life. I'm telling you, that was a life. It was simple. You know. Uh, but the whole thing was is uh, we always were rushing, saying, hurry up, get ready. We've got to go to church. Hurry up. The time is now. We're, we're fixing to leave. You've got to get ready. And the important, he, she would get us all like little chickens and hens and just get us all gathered up in one little place and said, okay, when I say go, we're getting in that car. We've got but a few minutes to get there. 
She knew it was important. Mom and dad knew it was important for us to hear the message about Jesus. And we were in a rush, but we got there. And we're so glad we did because it changed our lives as adults from our children, from children to be an adult. Uh, one of my brothers, a uh, deacon in the Baptist church, I'm pastor church, and my other brother, he is, uh, uh, he don't, he's a preacher, just don't know it yet, but he's, he's on his way. But God has influenced each of our lives because somebody saw it was important to prepare the way. You may be the one preparing the way for your child or your daughter or, hus or husband or wife or whoever it is. You may be preparing the way for them. And, and so I say to you is, is to be urgent about it, to be excited about it and, and, and find out where God is in your life and draw them just a little bit closer that the other world, people around your world can see and say, God is really coming. God is really uh, coming to see us soon. Jesus is coming soon. And so in this Advent season, we need to be excited about that and say he's coming. And it could be any day, any moment, any hour, any time, this moment and this day. And we need to be ready. For when he comes, it'd be like that door we shut and I heard that sound. If you're not where you need to be, it could be a very sad day. So it's by the grace of God today that we humble ourselves in his presence and say, God, come soon, but tarry just a little bit longer for those that don't know you, that they might be prepared that when you come, you will say well done to them. Prepare you the way. For there's one who's coming, whose shoes were not worthy and latches, who will baptize you not with water, but with the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Where is God in your life? Prepare the way. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the word that you've given us today. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you and to praise you. You're so good to us. You bless us in so many ways. And we need to realize this and pause just for a moment and say, God, come closer to me and may I come closer to you that when that time comes that you shall come for your people, we'll be ready. And Lord, as Jesus came in those days, may he come again with the message that Lord gives us not just the baptism of the body, but the baptism of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and amen. If we make a way for God today, now let us turn number 246, Joy to the World. <laughs> Would you stand? <laughs>
Please don't forget the announcements we have on the inside. Things are coming up. Join us this afternoon at 5 o'clock. Those are saying they're there about 4. And uh, got some other things coming up this week at 1 o'clock. Don't forget uh, on December 12th, uh, we'll see our friends at Rose Garden. And then we have our, our, uh, our sign on the 14th. So I'll read those things. Anything else in hearts or minds? Yes. Our request for Linda Stanford. Yes, I'm so glad. I'm glad a thing you might know her for me. She was burned uh, and she's in the uh, med, the burn unit. Linda Stanford. Any other prayer requests we didn't look up? Uh, Edison Humphrey, my 15 year old granddaughter's had a very difficult time since her father's death, and they put her on a suicide watch. Okay. You her. Anyone else? Okay, let us uh, leave this place now in a prayer in our heart for all those who lifted up. May God give us a wonderful week this week. May give us a passage to a time we understand that God is so near as we prepare a way for Him. Let's pray. Precious God, we lift up all these in our prayer list today. We lift up those in our hearts and minds. God, we just uh, pray that you comfort those that are going through bereavement, suffering, depression, and all the things that go with that. God, we know that you're able to help us overcome those things. And so, Lord, be with these families, be with this church. Now send us forth a prayer away for you, not in our lives, but in the lives of others. We thank you in the name of Jesus and all God's people say it. Amen. Amen.